Well, good morning, everyone. This has been a, a, a very interesting session, and you may be sitting there thinking, how am I going to do all this? I need some help. So I have the fun presentation of basically a show and tell of what's coming soon to an endoscopy unit near you. I want to acknowledge, before I get into this too much, my research assistant, Dylan Rodriguez, who helped me locate some of these videos. I think he actually hacked into some of these companies' servers to get them. And if you knew Dylan, you knew I was probably telling the truth. So you've heard a lot about what we currently have available using traditional colonoscopy, and I can break it into a number of different ways of thinking of it. The old standard definition scopes that I know some of you still use, which uh, has a polyp sensitivity and specificity listed, as you see. The high definition scopes, which we acknowledge not only the scope needs to be high definition, but your monitor viewing devices need to be high definition, and their polyp sensitivity and specificity um, varies depending on who looks at it and how you do it. Um, but in general, it's been thought to be superior to standard white light. And then we have narrowband imaging. You've heard reference to it in IBD looking for dysplasia, the available studies, which were with standard deaf and older narrowband technology, did not show benefit. Although I would tell you that in my own practice, I certainly use it as I go along. But I do have high deaf scopes, and I think that more work needs to be done, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And then dye spray chromoendoscopy, mostly at this meeting we've been discussing methylene blue, in part because there's a shortage of indigo carmine, but also because as more experience has developed and some more comfort levels, people have been using methylene blue, as you heard from Gary and Fernando and others. Now, we do certainly acknowledge their limitations to endoscopy in our current practice with our current equipment. It's not just limitations in your abilities and skill sets, but also limitations in the invasiveness of the procedures, the cost, and of course, how our patients perceive it. And notice that I, I wrote, patients don't like it mostly. Some patients actually like it. This is the double-edged sword of telling a patient you're trying to heal their bowel. They then want to know, is my bowel healed? And you may not get there in everybody, and that's another challenge for a different presentation. So let's look at some of the devices that are either in development or around the corner for us. This one is called NaviAid, and I'm using trade names because I need to in this uh, situation when I present to all of you. You're seeing a video of a patient of mine. Um, this is a through the colonoscope balloon device. So you are certainly familiar with the double balloon enteroscopy. This is a through the instrument channel device that has a balloon that insufflates, has a pressure sensor so the balloon doesn't go too large, and then you essentially manually or your assistant helps you pulls the scope along deeper into the ileum. Uh, one of my former research assistants and I did a case series demonstrating the feasibility and practicality of using this to intubate the ileum and to intubate more deeply in patients where we suspected some problems. And there's a very nice multi-center description of experience with this device that was just published earlier this year. Some here are familiar with Cellvisio, which is also a through the colonoscope device. This is also called optical biopsy. The probe is placed against the mucosa and a separate uh, screen uh, shows you images that you can see here. Those actually are uh, red blood cells in capillaries and you can actually see at a microscopic level. And once we have some experience, this is literally in vivo pathology. And so the idea here would be that if you can uh, be trained properly, you can avoid doing biopsies and be more accurate in the way you use your existing equipment. There is a nice review um, more recently published describing its utility in IBD, and I think there's more work to be done there. Some here in the room may have heard of Fuse. This is an actual video of me trying it out in combination with methylene blue chromoendoscopy. Um, there are three screens, uh, and it offers an enhanced uh, degree of field of view. It's 330 degrees field of view versus the usual 170. It looks like the usual scope, although I would tell you from my own experience it's a little bit um, stiffer. And you can see behind folds as you go along. So it offers you the enhanced viewing of just not missing things. Uh, and it has uh, some interesting potential there. And I was trying it out on a few patients. This one is a disposable, um, self-propelled, high-definition colonoscope. Self-propelled, that means you stick it in the rectum, you push a button, and you walk out of the room and go have lunch. When you come back, your patient's laying there, and it's in their cecum. Um, 
more or less, that's true. Uh, it takes a little longer to get there than some of you experienced folks, um, but that's because it's doing it on its own. Uh, there are a couple of drawbacks to it, and you can't retroflex with the device, and it doesn't have an instrument port. But you can imagine lining your patients up and putting these into them and leaving and then coming back and then just doing your work as you withdraw. Uh, there's some potential there. Here's another self-propelled. This one, the last one was from Israel. This one's from Germany. This is called the Invendoscope. Uh, this one, in contrast, uh, does offer some additional things. It's designed to retroflex in all areas of the colon, as you can see here with the device and the joystick. Uh, so you can actually retroflex anywhere. You don't have to worry about just the rectum or in those patients where it's appropriate, the cecum. Uh, and therefore, the argument is made that you can see behind all folds. Not yet available in the U.S., of course, but certainly interesting and another device to consider. So the disposable scopes. Um, maybe that's interesting. Uh, you probably know lots about the uh, pill cams, the small bowel pill cams. There's Olympus and uh, what was formerly called Given, and now I think they've been acquired, and Covidian may be the ones uh, running that company. But there's the pill cam colon, two cameras, one on each end, a delayed onset so that the battery power is, is preserved until it reaches the large intestine and then turns itself on and off as it goes along. It sort of knows when it's moving. Uh, and this is of interest. Uh, it's probably not something that's going to replace screening colonoscopy in the non-IBD population, nor will it be really to look for dysplasia, obviously. But what this has been proposed to do is maybe help us in looking for mucosal healing or even staging uh, IBD when you want to look to see in the ileum and throughout the colon. So there may be some use there and it's of interest. Now, if you didn't like um, Gary's video of him dressed in a gown and mixing up methylene blue, uh, you might be interested in this, which is an orally administered methylene blue MMX formulation. So the patient would swallow the methylene blue with a delayed delivery oral system that would then stain the colon, and it's already stained by the time you get there. This has some potential, uh, and there have been some uh, feasibility studies and a little bit of description here. Silvio Denisi uh, presented at ECHO the utility in IBD and found that it was a pretty good way to do this. So it's probably not as great as directed dye spray, but you can imagine this is another option for our future. Then there are the wavelength specific and alternate imaging approaches. I have a couple examples here. This one called FICE or Flexible Spectral Imaging Color Enhancement. Um, this is similar to chromo but with electronic filtering. So think of um, narrowband imaging on steroids because you can do a lot more in terms of adjusting your wavelengths. Those images across the bottom are examples of some of the digitally enhanced images. That's not dye spray chromo on the right there. That's actually the way things can look when you do this. So this obviously needs some more work, but lots of people are describing its utility and its potential in IBD. This is one that I had some interest in for a while. This is a gastro paper from a number of years ago now where they described what they call molecular beacons. These are essentially targeted um, dye or fluorescent dyes that enable you to administer it ahead of time and then when you do your scope, uh, it all lights up for you. So you essentially look through the colonoscope with an ultraviolet light or some other enhancement uh, light source and then you, it just tells you where you need to biopsy. So no more wondering and trying to figure out the pit patterns that Dr. Vallejos was showing you. You just have to know when to look at things that are lit up for you and then take the biopsies there. So there's some potential here uh, and the challenge in IBD has always been that whatever target we've chosen has hasn't been sufficiently specific enough for us uh, to be useful, so we have to figure out what to do about that, but this will be of interest coming soon. And then what about other ways to look for deep inflammation? This is um, PET scans. Now this particular video is showing you someone with widely metastatic disease. For me to remind you first that PET scanning is functional imaging with nuclear labeled sugars, and it goes wherever there's high metabolic activity. So in IBD, we've actually looked at this and others have as well. You can see one of my patients there on the left who had a PET scan as part of this study we published where the patient had endoscopic remission histologic remission and was in clinical remission, but the PET scan lit up, you can see the left colon there highlighted, and that's of interest and demonstrated probably functional activity that was going to lead to a relapse in, in short order. So this is another concept that might enable us to better understand when our patients are going to relapse or even define a deeper level of uh, control. Now what's next? I want you to look very carefully because as Fernando said, the more you look, the more you might see. Keep your eyes on the screen and tell me what this new technology might yield for all of you. Up, 
Here it comes. Maybe. <laughs> yes, this is the cause of IBD. Don't tell anybody that I showed it to you today. Okay, so in summary, we have a lot of new technologies. Obviously, one of the issues here isn't process. We can have new equipment, we can see things better, but we have to think about outcomes, relevant outcomes. I think Ed did a nice job summarizing that. We need to know not just that we can find more lesions, but that it changes what happens later. And we have very limited evidence of that in our field so far, so before we all rush to spraying things blue and buying expensive new equipment, I would advise you to use what you have well, understand the limitations of your skill set, refer when appropriate, and wait for the next bit of evidence and next year's meeting. Thank you very much.